five. Oh, it's picked it already. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> Either way. Okay, so here is our after brownies. Wow, they're so good. <laughs> Are they delicious? Guess what? Those are gluten free, dairy free. Yeah. I know. These are the best brownies I've had in my life. Yeah, they're literally, you can't wow. believe it. Wow. These? Did you hear that? These are the best brownies you guys have had in your That's life. That's worth if breaking not, your vegan diet. No, it, it, is it vegan? Oh, yeah. is it? Yeah. Oh, it is vegan. Yeah. Oh, no, because it's got eggs. Oh. Okay. But it's vegetarian. It's mostly vegan. It's vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, no. For real, these are like the best brownies I've had in my entire life. Your entire life. Look at that. You will not oh. regret it. Can you see the moistness? Can you see the chocolate chip in the middle? Oh, it is trickling. <laughs> <people. laughs> yeah. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day! Happy St. Patrick's Day! All right, today we are making fudgy brownies. Now, if you have, yes, I'm making more. If you have Dining on a Dime Cookbook Volume 1, it is right here on page 361. Right there, Volume 1. Now, this is the regular, um, this is the regular brownie recipe. Now, the ones that are, are after brownies that the kids have already dug into that they were raving about, these are in our gluten-free cookbook on page 284 right there. We have our saving of the green cell, guys. 35% off our cookbooks. Right now, our cookbook, our print cookbooks are 35% off. Our ebooks are up to 90% off. Our, our full ebook collection is 90% off, and all of our other ebooks are 70% off. Saving of the Green, living on a dime.com. And for those of you wanting to know, Ellie got goat milk cream restocked. So she's having her St. Patrick's Day sale, goatmilkgifts.com. Use the coupon code SAVE17. You get it? <laughs> And you'll get 17% off. So, sales everywhere. She got her goat, she sold out of her goat milk cream and she got it back in stock. So, for those of you guys who are asking about it. All right, so what we got here is our fudge brownies in our Dining on a Dime cookbook. Dining on a Dime cookbook. Now, I am, um, okay, I am doing something. What am I doing? Something, and I'm confused. Okay, so I've got my one cup of butter here, or margarine, whichever you want. Sorry, I'm dazed and confused here. And we're going to melt or butter or margarine. I'm using butter in this case because I don't have any margarine on hand. Usually I use margarine just because it's cheaper. Um, and for recipes like brownies, I mean, it doesn't really make that much of a difference in the taste. So margarine is a lot cheaper. Definitely worth it. Okay, throwing that in the microwave with a piece of is that paper. Oh no, it's just butter. Okay. All right, putting that in, in the microwave. I'm going to make these ugh, there so they will fit in the bowl. Okay. We're going to get that melted. All right. Now, this is five ingredients, guys. Super easy super quick i mean really it takes no time at all um let's get tired made a batch before the show and the boys are going crazy yeah so for those of you just kind of missed at the beginning the kids were going crazy and i said um excuse me those are show brownies they're my magic of television brownies you're putting a hole in my brownies well, you know what? Girlfriend. <laughs> I take it you like my brownie. Show them the brownie fudgy goodness. It is. It's really like a piece of fudge, actually. These are the gluten-free oh. ones. Don't mind if I do. Mm -hmm. 
from that delicious. What, why'd she get a piece? What? You got a piece? What? Okay, so we have our melted butter right here. Okay. And then we are going to add our sugar and our cocoa. Now, here's a little trick for, for baking cocoa. Now, this is not Swiss Miss cocoa. This is not drinking cocoa. This is baking cocoa. There's no sugar in it, okay? It's just powdered up chocolate. Now, here's a little tip. Make sure when you use baking cocoa that it is packed into your measuring cup. Okay, and I just use the paper to do it, but see how that's packed in there? Okay. And then we're gonna stir, then we're gonna stir this together, just like so, just to get it kind of started. And then we're gonna get our eggs. We've got four eggs. Now, this does not have any baking soda or baking powder to help it rise. It is just the eggs that are used as the leavening. Whoops, got a shell. Um, and so you don't need any baking powder or baking soda. There. Did you guys know that little trick? Use an eggshell to get an eggshell out. Um, and then your brownies are still nicely risen, but you don't have to have the baking powder. Okay. And then these don't need salt, but I always add a pinch of salt because you know the world needs more salt people. And Dave. I totally spaced getting my baking pan. There's a laundry basket on the baking shelf in the on the show shelf in the garage. Can you get the square red pan? The square red pan. Okay, so we're getting this mixed in. That's it, guys, right there. Laundry basket, square red pan. A lot of people they love this recipe. Yep. So here's something funny about this recipe, guys. I got this recipe in high school, and this was the first recipe I ever made in home ec. Yes, they still had home ec when I was in high school. And I still have the original recipe card that I wrote it on. And I just think that's the coolest thing. Okay, so there we go. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I started the oven. I forgot I got Dave and Jack's cheese for rolls in there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to grease. Can I put it up? Now we're going to grease the baking pan. Okay. Right there. And we are going to dump. these brownies in. Does anybody want to lick the bowl? <laughs> Any bowl lickers before I... Okay, so tell me, did you guys have a mother who wouldn't let you lick the bowl? I had a wonderful mother. She let me lick the bowl. I had a mother who wouldn't let me lick the bowl. Oh, stop it. <laughs> you can have the bowl right here. You want the bowl? No, no, no. And the spoon? No, 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 thank you. I'm just joking. I'm Look at all that yummy goodness you're missing out on. Okay. I'll save it for Jim. There you go. Now we're going to throw that in the oven. Well, I need to let it get higher. Now, that is the regular brownies. But here is the gluten-free brownies that my children have already dug into. Now, we are going to make, because it's St. Patrick's Day. Um, I don't want to file it with frosting. You don't want it with frosting? I don't want it to file it with frosting. Just frost like half of it. All right. Is there no flour in the recipe? Please. I, I'm sorry. A cup, yeah. Oh, okay. Somebody said, well, no flour. And I was like, what? No, I put the flour in. Yeah. Didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, I think you yeah. put the flour in. Oh, I didn't put the oh. flour in. Ah! It's not in there. Ah! <laughs> okay. 
<clears throat> Hold on. Those are going to be some extra sweet brownies there. Okay, so now. <laughs> Ice cream topping. <laughs> Good thing so now we're going to go back in, and we're going to add the flour. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> I forgot the main ingredient. Your mom all the time. Okay, so then you take the flour. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> uh, we need to do a bloopers, a bloopers show. I told you what the thing is. I've got enough now that... If I could remember, okay, guys, as you're running along videos, post in the comments when you find me doing something like that. We'll put a bloopers reel together. We've got over 1,500 videos, so to go through all of them would be a lot. Okay. <laughs> all right, here we go. All that yummy goodness. We're going to have to shout out to Shelly S. for <laughs> Being the one to point All out. All right, Shelly, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Your mom says she thinks she was a failure as a mom. Well. <laughs> she at least. She herself open for that with Tara. She, she, <laughs> she did at least let me lick the bowl. I mean, you know, that's saying a lot. So it's a meal for butter. You didn't put the butter in. I did there. put the butter in. <laughs> Okay. There we go. All right. See, I just did that just so you guys were see if you guys were paying attention because I didn't know if you were actually paying attention. Completely scripted. So now I know if you were paying attention. Which whoever said that was. Amy says, this makes me feel so much better. I was so absent-minded at work today. I think it's the time change. <laughs> oh, don't yes. get me started on the time change. It makes me so mad. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Okay. If we move to Sweden, they don't have the time change, huh, Dave? Okay, so now, back to the frosting. Okay. Since it's St. Patrick's Day, we are... Um, we are making mint frosting for this, okay? Now, since this is going on my gluten-free, dairy-free brownies, I'm making a dairy-free frosting, okay? And I have my powdered sugar in here, my peppermint extract, my green food coloring, and my dairy-free milk. Now you can use any kind of milk you want. I prefer rice or flax for the dairy free because it doesn't leave an aftertaste or it doesn't leave a taste like coconut does, but you can use any of them you want, okay? And then we're adding peppermint flavoring and um Do you want me to set the timer for that or? We don't do timers around here, my goodness. We just wait for the smell. Um, yeah, I can just like it. Okay, let's see. The timer needs to be 30 minutes. So um, okay, so there we go. So now we're gonna mix our frosting. frosting with peppermint flavoring. All right, so I would think you would like this, Dave. You love peppermint. Now, here's a trick 
for cutting brownies. Use a plastic knife and see how smooth that cuts? It doesn't make it crumbly when you use a plastic knife to cut brownies. Okay, now Ellie just, oh my goodness, I'm so disturbed. My brownies are uneven now. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get these cut. There we go, and then we will cut. All right, come to Dad, Dave, and we'll have Dad do a taste test and see what he thinks. Guys, we are having our saving of the green cell right now, livingonadive.com, 35% off all our cookbooks, 70 to 90% off our eBooks. Ooh, ooh, is this a test? This is a taste test. I better get over there. Ooh, yum. Wow. That's the gluten-free one. Man, it's really, really moist and yummy. Oh, man, did you put mint in there? I did. Oh, yo. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> oh, great. Now I got to get my own? You can have some. No. No. Here. No, I am sick. Oh. <laughs> oh. See, I see how you are. <laughs> mm. Oh. Yeah, oh, these taste like mom's did. They're oh, really good. Man, oh, man. That's really good. Mm. Oops. Oh, dear. Mm. I just dropped it down my shirt. Do you want to retrieve it, dear? <laughs> no. <laughs> you made a joke. <laughs> family. 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 <laughs> <Wow. laughs> mm. Oh, man, that's really good. All right. <laughs> Anyone done and cookbook? Page 361, and I just dumped brownie all over it right there <laughs> for the regular. So Jesse's asking back on dairy, but these are gluten free, dairy free ones that you made earlier, right? Yep. Yeah. So Jesse, the ones she made just now. These ones that not, I made. But the ones she made earlier that we're eating now, those mm -hmm. are the gluten free, dairy free ones. So, and they are super amazing. Oh, really I never would have guessed that with the gluten free. <laughs> Your wife's a good cook. Yes, you are. <laughs> Thank you. I think you're getting uh, vindicated for the turkey jerky. For the turkey jerky? I oh, know you've got chocolate on your face. Do you need me to kiss it off for you? Sure. <laughs> no. All right. Let me get this stuff <laughs> out of the way here. Um, okay. So, <laughs> I, oops, and I forgot. Oh, this one doesn't have vanilla. That was for the. Nikki Doss is loving. Dave saying no. <laughs> yeah, uh, we love to do that flirting. to our children. Ooh, my dad said there. I want to try raspberry flavor in the icing. Oh, that would oh, be, that'd that'd be really, really good. Or strawberry or cherry. Oh man, do a cherry one. That would be super delicious. <laughs> okay, so while we're <clears throat> chatting and doing questions, I'm going to make our dinner, which is cheeseburger rolls and I am going to cut peach soap right here oh that smells so good peach soap so we're going to do those two things Dave can you give me the cheese and the hamburger out of the fridge can I get the brownies or just give me the hamburger out of the fridge can you get the brownies in when you if you want more brownies so DJ says I did that with pumpkin pie right twice. Down. Once I forgot the sugar, the second I forgot the milk. Oops. What's funny is I'm going to give Jill's secret away here. One Christmas, <laughs> she made it her amazing apple pie <clears throat> with no sugar. And so we ended up uh, serving it with ice cream, and it tasted awesome. Yeah. So that was a great way to be able to eat it without. Yeah. The, sugar problem so yeah that's true okay these are our cheeseburger rolls and dining out of dime volume one now i just make it into one big cheeseburger roll instead of individual ones so that's you can do it that dave says that's the best way to do it i should know because i'm the cheeseburger what? roll what are you, you are working I know. I know you're it's not supposed to be <laughs> it's inspiration <laughs> yes <laughs> I see. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Oh, you better for temptation. 
don't you leave it there because you're tempted? Yes, because I'm tempted. I don't need to save some space for the cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. You do. Okay, so guys, here's my packet. You know how I always freeze my hamburger in little oh, sandwich bags? Here's my little sandwich bag of hamburger. I guess it should drop though. Gonna throw it in here and just microwave it to defrost it. Oh. oh. I'm going back up, guys. Okay, and then I'm gonna finish rolling out my dough here, which kind of got a little oblong here. Should I show you your dough? And it doesn't, yeah, sure. Okay, so get it all rolled out here. Okay, there we go. Getting. I don't, I'm not very precise in my rolling out, but it's all right. Okay, then if you want to put extra butter, you can. I usually just put butter on top. Then I just sprinkle cheese. Dave doesn't like a lot of cheese. He just likes some cheese. There we go. I like the moderate amount. You like the what? Medium to moderate. Medium to moderate amount of cheese? Or moderate to me. I don't know. What are you Those brownies are going to... You can have some. Well, you're, <laughs> you're making more. I am making more. I'm just giving you guys a hard time. But maybe okay. save a couple of those because they're gluten-free so mom can eat them. Yeah, same the other one. Uh -uh, same one. The other ones are the regular fudge. Okay, so there we've got our cheese and our burger, thus cheeseburger rolls. Yum. Sprinkle a little bit of seasoned salt. Maybe a little more cheese. You want a little more cheese. Maybe just a little bit. So Denise is surprised you didn't make the corned beef and cabbage today. That's perfect. You know, we don't like corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> So I figured last year I ended up taking the corned beef and cabbage to someone. Actually, that was the last time I saw my crock pot. Now I think about it. <laughs> okay. Did I, uh, I can't remember. I don't know. I like the cabbage, not so much the corned beef. Nobody likes corned beef around here, and it gives me a headache from all the nitrates, so I don't eat it. But um, okay. So now we have our cheeseburger roll rolled up and pinched, just like so. And we're going to throw it on our tray, which is looking, seeing better days. And now we're going to let that rise, okay? And then we will put it in the oven. And that's it for the cheeseburger roll. I mean, I made the dough earlier, but that's how simple it is. So anyway, all right, guys, do we have questions? <clears throat> that you <coughs> need me or would like to ask me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yes, well, I think Frankie was asking everybody, but she's wondering what's your go-to dinner in the summer when it gets warmer, but you don't want to turn on the oven. Uh, I make green chili. We have a post on that, don't we? Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, we have a post on that. Um, Green chili is always a big one. Um, you can do salads, like a chicken salad, roast some chicken, do something like that. Um, of course, tacos, quesadillas, burritos, tostadas, anything like that. We love Mexican food, so we're always eating that kind of stuff. Um, then, uh-oh, where'd my giant knife go? Dave, can you hand me my giant knife over there? I don't know how it ended up over there. Then, um, uh, what was I going to say? Do things like get a rotisserie chicken. Thank you. Get a rotisserie chicken and use it for several meals. So eat it as the rotisserie chicken for the first day. And then use it for chicken salad, chicken noodles. I like chicken and noodles a lot. All right, this is our peach. This is our peach, uh, fresh peach soap. I made some today. I have to stand for this one. Oh, 
I made it today to go with, Ellie has the peach goat milk cream in stock. This, oh my goodness, it smells so delicious. It is a wonderful summer favorite. So I thought I'd make the peach soap to go with the uh, goat milk cream that she has. I'm measuring the bars right now. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, I mean, take advantage of rotisserie chickens at the at the deli is what I do. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, of course, I only get them on the on clearance, so I pay like four dollars for mine. But um, um, Buster, please don't. Oh my goodness, Buster. Oh, Buster. Okay, he thought he found a great snack. So this is the peach right here, guys. Got a video coming out on this. By the way, my How to Make Soap for Beginners e-course, for those of you wondering, is on sale. I think it's 70% off. So if you guys like my soap, there is peach. Ooh, I love that one. That turned out so pretty. Okay, any other questions, dear? Uh, <clears throat> Leanne, do you have a gluten-free version of the cheeseburger roll? No, no, I do not. So that is one that I did not get a good enough recipe yet. I am still actually experimenting with a good enough dough to make the cheeseburger roll gluten-free, dairy-free. Baking with gluten-free flour is a little tricky and actually i think i decided today that i am going to start another youtube channel and just do gluten-free baking what are you oh <laughs> and just do gluten-free baking um look at those Ooh, that is so pretty I am loving it. Okay, next question. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see. Hey, loved your snow videos. How much snow did you get? Well, uh, we aren't totally sure because it was blowing so hard. It was an actual blizzard. And it was blowing so hard, we really couldn't get an accurate measure. Goat milk gifts. Scott dot com guys. Ellie's got her St. Patrick's Day seventeen percent off sale right now. Well, there is so much around. Uh, you can come back to me. So, so we ended up. Our backyard has a six foot fence, and in some places it was drifted five feet in our fence, and then other places it was about four feet. And then if you guys saw in the video, it was about two and a half. It was about three feet where I was sitting in it because I was up off the ground because it was such a wet snow. It kept packing down. And I mean, it was a really wet snow. I can't imagine how much we would have had if it was a fluffy snow. And it, um, it, what is that? That's your phone. Um, oh, I thought you put down. Is that my phone ringing? No, that's not her phone. That's someone else. Um, and so we had, I would say probably a good three feet of snow. Dave and I had to go to Boulder yesterday to get his teeth done, to have dental work done at the dentist. And they had nothing compared to us. We had, oh my goodness, probably five, six foot tunnels on each side in the the main road leaving our town it was it was probably five or six feet tall tunnel going through and when we went to boulder there was like this much on the ground so jim cantori went to the wrong city i guess so he should come so to me what would you say is the average of what we got well here in need i think we got a good three feet at least three i feet. would say about three feet. at no, least <laughs> the nearest stick at the lowest point in the yard was two feet and then at the highest point in the yard it's just completely sunk through this yeah minutes. i don't know what the highest was and then we ended up we weren't planning to do it all at once but we ended up 
one of the neighbors is really nice and he comes over and brings a uh, he'll just randomly show up in the driveway with a snowblower or something and i was thinking oh i think i'll go out and help and so we all ended up going out there and because somebody would i just want to leave somebody doing all the work on our driveway <laughs> so well, we, yeah. we spent half the day uh yeah. all the kids well did you do something you remember i did just a little bit not we a spent lot half the day i was editing videos <laughs> cleaning out snow so i was having to get a video the video edited so him and the boys were out shoveling and then they helped the neighbor there's an elderly couple on the end of the corner there and so we try to help them um when we can and so they were over helping uh do them so michelle says she always keeps shredded cheese for quesadillas oh yeah mm -hmm. we keep it for a yeah, lot of we things do too yeah. Um, Jesse wanted to know where was the fancy soap cutter? Um, this is mountain pour soap, so it's 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 better to cut it with a knife than the soap cutter because you can break the string because the mountain pour soap is so heavy or hard. So Lauren, I made your two ingredient apple pie for pie day using cinnamon rolls, and it was amazing. Yay! Ooh, oh, you know it didn't occur to me, but that would be that's a good time to put it out. Did you make that connection beforehand? No. I did not, but that's a good idea. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, let's see, there were all sorts of other things. And just for the record, March is Colorado's snowiest month of the year. So, because that's when we get most of our moisture. Bertha said paid off our credit cards today. Woohoo! Yay! You go! And somebody else, oh, yeah, Mindy said, this is great. My husband and I paid off our house today. Thank you so much for all your advice and tips over the years. That truly helped us use our money better. Mindy! That is awesome. That is a great that opportunity great. for celebration. Definitely. <laughs> okay, Mindy, I'm doing a giveaway today for one of my cookbooks. Do you have if you don't have it, email me living on a dime. Go to editor at livingonadime.com to email me or go to livingonadime.com and click on the contact form and I'll send you our book. Let me know if you have volume one or volume two, which one you want. Let's see. Congratulations. Isn't it a good feeling? See, that's the problem we're having with moving is the properties that we are looking at are significantly more expensive than what we own now because we're trying to get land and we just don't want to get a mortgage again. We just really don't. So now we're kind of at the stage of, Dave, can you open the back door? Now we're kind of at the stage of, do we wait until January or February when foreclosures are going to start happening? Dave says we should move to Sweden. Uh, Dave wants to move to Sweden. He's been in Sweden mode for, what, six months now? Did Probably you give Michelle her Bible? No, actually, I was uh, going to email her today about it. Oh. Well, no, we've already, I've already emailed her about it. But oh, did she send we, the address? Well, we didn't. I have an address, but there was a certain question. Oh. Was. To find is Tara gluten free? Yes, I'm gluten free and dairy free. Oh, so. Cheryl says I'm in Pennsylvania and saw daffodils were coming up. Wow. Wow. Well, actually, I was getting concerned because <clears throat> the water's falling or the water's melting off the roof into the gutter, but the gutter is covered by two feet of snow. And so I was like, where is all this water going because we can't see it because of the snow <laughs> and so i made i had jack go down about an hour ago and make sure his room wasn't flooding downstairs because i because his his bedroom windows right next to that gutter and i don't know where the water's going there must be a river under the snow going down but maybe that area we weren't supposed to flatten out so we could run off <laughs> i don't know it's funny they made our they made this kind of big ditch in the middle of our yard that we weren't supposed to fill in. But so ridiculous. But Colorado, even in 2013, when we had the biggest floods that anyone's ever recorded here, there was virtually no water in our yard. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking, why exactly is there a ditch in our yard? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so let's see. Mm -hmm. It was Madeline's birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, Madeline! Happy birthday! 
Frankie, do I use salted or unsalted butter? I always use salted, always. Why? There is never enough salt, and the world needs more salt. <laughs> Seriously, people always compliment mom and I on our food. Like, our food is the first to go at Pocklux, and I'm not saying that to be whatever, boastful. <laughs> but I'm saying that because we actually salt our food the proper amount. I did uh, how to make roast in an instant pot with my friend Patty Alderman. Just type in instant pot roast on our um, videos. Go to videos at, at YouTube and click on videos, and then you'll see, uh, just type in roast or instant pot roast, and you'll see that video. And she put a lot of salt in there. And the one comment we keep getting on that is, man, you're going to kill somebody with that amount of salt. <laughs> no, you have to put an adequate amount of salt for it to taste good. And nowadays, because people are so afraid of salt, there's a there's an Irish kiss for Nan. Um, <laughs> Jesse, did this they don't thing? put enough in. They don't put enough salt in anything. And so that's why everybody likes our food because we actually salt it. Yes, actually, it's, what's funny is there was that doctor that told you. you yeah, I actually had a doctor tell me that Americans need more salt, and they're actually having sodium issues, and they're having major issues because of uh, not enough salt. And I know of three people who were put in the hospital because they didn't have enough salt in their diet. <clears throat> so. Um. Yes, I posted the link to Ellie's soap site or to the Goat Milk Gifts site in there. Goatmilkgifts.com. Save 17 is the coupon code to get 17% off now. And she is restocked. And if you guys want some, order because she keeps selling out. So if you want something, go order it because she keeps selling out. So, so I meant to ask you earlier, when is her sale over? I don't know. And she's gone. So I don't know when it's over. Probably a week usually is what she runs them, but I don't know. So, and Ellie has taken over the soap portion of it as far as the goat milk gift and the soaps. But um, here's, here's the goat milk cream right here. She's got the four ounce and the eight ounce right there. And then she's got the goat milk soaps. And then I just am making soaps just because I missed making soap and so she's selling whatever I make in there also I just I can't do all the shipping it just wears me out so I just told her you take it over and I'll just do it for fun so so Kathy is asking order even if it says unavailable is it... oh is she sold out already I wonder if something's wrong Ellie hold on <clears throat> hold on we'll get her just a second we'll get her to go look just a minute uh okay so let's see you can look here while i look over here yeah a number of people paying off credit cards with stimulus checks like, there you go that's a better idea because i think so many people would just go buy an atv or something yeah uh, i'm going to talk about there in just a second some people said they were trying to order and it says unavailable do you have everything unavailable unav she's going to go check right now guys um, Come and uh, stimulus checks guys don't waste it. Now, I know, I think that's the most ridiculous thing the government's ever done. It's going to cost, like, each person who gets a $1,400 check, it's going to cost them, like, $70,000 to pay off $1,400 with their taxes over their lifetime paying for this. It's ridiculous. But besides that, don't waste it on something like a big screen TV or a new iPhone. Use that to propel yourself up. This is what Mike and I did to get ourselves out of debt and then to stay out of debt so that if we had a stimulus check and we had our medical bills still, that would have gone on our medical bills. Or if we had all our stuff paid off and we didn't have an emergency fund set up, it would be our emergency fund. We wouldn't go wasted on a vacation or anything like that. This is an opportunity for you to make most of it that you can and not just squander it away. 
There's oh. enough other people <clears throat> squandering that you don't need to squander. Yeah, they squander it and you don't squander it, you're gonna end up ahead. Yeah. So that's great. Common Sense University is wondering how long does it take to get the cookbooks in the mail if we order them today? Um, okay, normally it takes five to seven days, but they go media mail and it can take up to two weeks. But the post office is still using that thing that was going around as an excuse. And so sometimes it's taking a month. We've had some packages in Pennsylvania specifically. Pittsburgh, you need to get it together, Pittsburgh. It is Pittsburgh that's the problem. <laughs> and every single package that has been a problem has been Pittsburgh. But it should be about seven, five to seven days via media mail. But I can't make a guarantee. It looks like everything's on there. Okay. <clears throat> Ellie said everything should be available in the shop. So let us know whoever it was. Cheryl, I can't remember who it was. Let us know what it was you were looking at. There's one or two things sold out. Oh, okay. She well, said she's had got one or two things sold out. And if you're not sure, you can hit refresh because if you've loaded the page before and it was yeah. sold out, then it might still show sold out. Uh, yeah. What is the name of the bread pan you use to make your gluten-free, oops, sandwich bread? Is that uh, just a bread pan? Well, okay. So here's the thing. All right, so here's the thing. I tested my gluten-free sandwich bread like 40 times and kept tweaking it and tweaking it. And then I had the recipe all done and I came across another tweakage. Is that a word, a tweakage? <laughs> and decided to try that and when I did, I changed. So I was using Oh, they said you, you get this it. USA pan. Okay. I was using this USA pan. It's nine by four and it has the ridges so that the bread can creep up and it didn't fall down. Okay. But so I like this pan is what I'm saying. But the recipe that's in here now is just a nine by four, I think, or five, nine by four. Oh, I can't remember. Um, so it's just a regular bread pan, but what I was going to say was, um, hold on, let me look it up here just a second. Oops, where'd it go? Um, hold on, hold on, I'm almost there. Okay, but let's see, it is, okay. It is this size, the eight by four. But what I was gonna say was, if you can find one with the ridges, that seems to work better. But here's the thing, do not use the eight by four. It has to be nine by five. See the difference? Can you see the difference there? If, you use the eight by four, you are gonna have an A1 broil mess in your oven. It will just overflow everywhere. So when you make the gluten-free bread, follow the directions exactly. If you follow the directions exactly, it should turn out just fine. But don't be doing substitutes, don't be changing pans, nothing. You have to follow it exactly. Next question. Uh, <clears throat> Tracy said I went to order some charcoal soap from Ellie, but it's out of stock. Oh, is it really? Ellie? Dave, ask Ellie if she's out of charcoal <clears throat> soap. I don't think she is. Okay, we'll go ask her if she's out of it. If if she's out of it, 
I'll make a batch tomorrow and she'll put she'll get it put up there. Okay. Is that the brownies or something else? That's no. brownies. Oh, but yum. okay, so here's the thing, they're not done yet because I used a smaller pan. I think that's a seven by seven instead of an eight by eight. Gotcha. Um somebody asked, oh, do you use regular yeast or fast acting yeast? Both, but I like fast yeah, fast acting because why wait around when you don't need to? <laughs> I can't imagine that you <laughs> Are you sold out of charcoal soap? She's in, oh, so she's looking. Okay, she's checking on the charcoal soap. So they were talking earlier about the tar bloopers. It wouldn't be a show without a tar blooper. And then, oh, there were a couple other comments that were kind of funny. One person was saying, oh, here. Yeah, somebody says, I love this. Oh, Denise, I love this. You remind me of Lucy Ball. <laughs> Frankie said. Two left, which I'm adding right now. You what? I have two left, which I'm adding right now. Okay, she has two bars of charcoal. Ellie? Ellie? Huh? Oh, go ahead and add 20 bars, and I'll make a batch tomorrow for everybody, okay? <clears throat> for pre orders? Yeah. Okay, she's got two bars. I will make a double batch tomorrow of the charcoal soap. So if you want the two bars, run over there right now, goatmilkgifts.com. She is setting it on there, and then the other one will be for pre order. But it, it, I'll do. It's pre -pre -order. Huh? It's like it's pre yeah, it'll be pre order, but it's only going to be a week. It's I'm going to hot process. I'll make it hot process. So so don't uh, don't think it's going to take weeks or anything. It'll just be a week before she steps it out. So earlier, also, Frankie said she remembers you dropping the phone in the soap, the oven fire, and the countertop and cabinet loveliness. <laughs> Those were some really good ones, especially that phone still the, alive? the phone and the soap actually survived. Yeah, I still, that's what I used to do my videos right now. Was live streaming in the boiling soap for probably 10 seconds before yeah. she pulled it out. Amazing advertising. Amazing uh, advertising for that phone. And I had to clean it out like crazy. Uh, Beth was wondering, can you use carob powder instead of cocoa in the brownies? You can try it. I haven't tried it, but you can try it. I Chocolate gives me headaches, and so I had thought about trying it. Everything gives me headaches. I, I have permanent headache. But <laughs> um, but uh, I haven't tried it yet, but you could try it. I mean, my goodness, she'll be out, what, $1.50's worth of ingredients, so it's worth a try. Guys, that's one thing about baking. Put it in perspective. People say, well, I don't know if that's going to work or not. Put it in perspective. So you can spend a dollar to a dollar fifty making gluten-free, dairy-free brownies and experimenting with something like the carob powder. If it doesn't work, okay, you're out $1.50, but that's not that big of a deal. And if it does work, you could save hundreds of dollars on having to buy specialty gluten-free cake mixes or specialty carob brownies. So that's why I don't ever hesitate with experimenting because in the long run, okay, yeah, you may have a few flops here and there, but in the long run, you'll have more successes than you will flops and you'll save a whole lot more money. Diane says, be careful not to overdo it with the soaps, Tara, dear Tara. Oh, I'm not, I'm only doing one a week right now, so. I think the thing that was the biggest problem for her before was when she started doing soap supplies. <clears throat> because the soap supplies, were just a massive amount of work that she wasn't really expecting. And and that's, yeah. I think, what kind of burned her out pretty badly there. I do miss it. And if we get a big enough warehouse, I might do it again. <laughs> well, I think Tara making the soaps is OK. It was the supplies that yeah. went out of control. I found the issue. But the uh, upside of that is we have Ah, uh, uh, Just switch it real quick. Yeah. One second, guys. Just add the other one first and then subtract that one. Um, a lot of people asking for prayers oh. for the south. They said they're really bad storms down there. That must be our storm. Uh oh, it's not freezing when it goes to them. Oh dear. Uh, let's see the answer to that. Michelle loves the little rolling pin. Lots of people have been saying they bought the rolling pin after seeing that. Uh -huh. early one. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Um. Let's see. Oh, Brooke was wondering how did BJ make out with all the snow in the electric he car? He did not, but so he got stuck there for a day and a half. And then on the second day, he 
came over here and he ended up spending the night over here because it was so bad he couldn't get back home and he he works just about a mile from our house and so he uh had some important sales that he wanted to do or possible sales that he wanted to do and so he spent the night sunday night but he said that the snow was to the top of his car and he was plowing through and he was like, oh man, that was the stupidest thing to do. He said they hadn't plowed the road yet. And he said he was praying the whole way he'd make it because the road was so bad. But he said his car's so heavy because it's electric. His car was so heavy that he was able to kind of plow his way through. But I'm glad I wasn't there. He should have filmed that one. But Well, we, I was wondering because... He lives in his RV out on a farm. And yeah. so I was curious if he was going to be able to get out or if he was yeah. going to need help. Well, I guess the farmer did a lot of plowing that day. Yeah, everybody was plowing a lot. Yeah. Um, Kay says it will be worth the wait when you find the best property for yourself. Oh, I hope so. September, it'll be five years. And here's the thing. I really want to get moved. The thought of spending another summer in this house just makes me want to scream. But if we could save one or two hundred thousand dollars and get a nicer property for cash because prices go down in nine months, it would be worth it. But Bertha yeah. says this is a silly question. Oops. I can put the question up there because she's probably not the only one wondering this. She says, this is a silly question, but back behind Tara to the right of the bucket with the spatulas, what is the red and white thing? I have been wondering for a long yes. time. Yes. <laughs> You've asked the perfect question that Tara, I'm sure, would love to answer. Well, it's dirty. I need to clean it. But this is our salt rack. This is my grandma's original spice rack with dust and all. I need to wash it. But it's my grandma's spice rack from probably the 50s, I would say. Probably really late 40s, 50s. Do they say on there? No, I don't say. But <laughs> Tara loves all the old things. Yeah. Like In fact, she also has a 100-year-old cookie jar that she's using for paint Yeah. Mix. So I have <clears throat> This one here, that's my great grandma's cookie jar from the 50s, 40s, 30s. I don't know. Mom uh, it might looks know. Like it could be but any of those, really. <laughs> but I like all the old things, and I'd like to get a place when we move that has um, a kitchen where I can display some of those things or a studio or something where I could display them. Garcia family, we have to share. I found butter for a dollar Ooh. a pound, about 60 pounds. You go, wow. yeah. Wow, where'd you find that at? That is, that is awesome. an awesome deal. Yeah, I haven't seen butter for a dollar a pound for probably 20 years. They must have been trying to really get rid of it. Wow. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. I don't see any new questions at the moment, so I'm going to look through and see what else we have there. Yeah, a lot of people talking about trying to be smart with this stimulus and paying off debt or putting it in savings. Yay. Yeah, because there's enough other fools out there that <laughs> you don't need to be stimulating the economy. <laughs> Leanne wants to know, are you serious about doing a gluten-free channel? Did you say something about that? Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> you know, I need my big mouth. Well, actually, yeah, I'm pretty serious. So... I'm thinking about doing a gluten-free channel. So here's the thing. Mike and I are going through a YouTube course on how to improve your YouTube channel. And before we even started the course, we got some news and we were just kind of like, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, and we won't go into details yet. We'll wait a few weeks before we go into details. But suffice it to say, I have my five ingredient channel. Mike, can you put the link in there? Sure. Have my five ingredient channel that I'm going to start putting all a lot of my recipes on five ingredients. 
And then I decided today to do gluten free because my gluten free recipes don't really fit in anywhere. So I'm going to get that set up. I'll make the announcement what the name is next week and everything. Um, and then living on a dime, we're going to start focusing more living on a dime on saving money over recipes is what we're going to start doing. We're still going to have a few recipes, but the majority of our recipes are going to be over at five ingredients from now on. So, and then Mike's Bible questions, all the Bible questions we're going to put on his Christian ABCs channel so we can kind of separate stuff up because living on a dime has a problem that YouTube doesn't know what living on a dime is about. So we need to start focusing living on a dime. <laughs> yes. Denise, love your five ingredient channel. Yay. Thanks. <clears throat> well, I just have a few videos that I was experimenting with on there, but now I know the direction I'm going and actually I'm going to start, uh, start doing more videos here in just a little bit, probably in the next two weeks or so. What we have found though, is that by kind of separating some of the topics from each other a little bit, everything will probably improve. Do better. Everywhere. Yeah. And it'll still be us. So if you want to see us, but we're not doing the one thing in this one place, yeah. then you know where it is. So yeah. yeah. Uh, oops. So. Christina says, my first live, y'all are amazing. God bless you and your family. Thank oh, you, Christina. Thanks. Well, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. And we'll still answer Bible questions here, guys. So don't, don't think we're not going to answer Bible questions or anything. So like if we're having a show like this, we'll still answer the Bible questions. But we're just trying to get refocused. And by the end of July, we're going to have... Yeah, <laughs> we're going to have the new book at the printer. We got started on our five ingredient cookbook. So that's being started right now. You'll be doing and, soap again because you'll have four people that you yeah. can hire to do it with yeah. you. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. Thank you, Diane. Mike, I love your new channel so much. I appreciate that. Oh, hey, uh, if any of you have been having trouble on that, on YouTube, you click subscribe and then you click the bell icon to get notified if a new video is coming out. And Jill was having trouble where it wouldn't let her click the bell icon. But we don't of, know why. We weren't having any trouble with it. So I'm just if you have a if you've had trouble with that, let us know. No, because I, I kind of looked through a lot of stuff the other day to see if. It well, so be. there's nothing you can do about it, even if it's happening, is there? Well, if it's a lot. I mean, there's not a lot I can do, but I could try to research I could maybe ask on the group, YouTube group. It's hard to get a hold of people at YouTube, except when they decide they want to work with us. Yeah, but we have there. connections now. Well, that's true. <laughs> so, all right. Let's see. Wow, it is really nice today, by the way, as I'm looking for comments. Yeah, it's like 60 degrees today. And it's funny because out in the street, oh, this giant, did you tell them the story about the giant front loader? We were at another night. We were here. We were hearing beep beep. So we got up and went out and looked. And like nine and thirty at night, there was a humongous front loader, like a lot bigger than an average one. Like you know the mining ones where yeah. they use for the mines. It was out in the front scooping the snow in our cul-de-sac. Otherwise, we would never have gotten out. Gotten out. And they made this giant snow mountain in the middle. And so the next day, all every, all the neighbors were out, and all the kids were on the snow pile. It was really awesome. So, <laughs> uh, did you have brownies in the oven? Did you take them out? Yeah, I'm letting them. So, my pan was seven by seven instead of eight by eight. So, it's taking about 15, 20 minutes longer instead of the regular 30 minutes. So, that's why I'm letting them cook a little bit longer. Bye, Julie. Bye, Julie. Uh, Michelle, YouTube quit sending me notifications through my email. So, I just clicked the button on my YouTube screen. Hmm. So, I didn't know YouTube. Does YouTube send you stuff through email? For for our own channel, it does, but not for anything else. Hmm. I I don't know. YouTube is its own thing, but we're trying to we're trying to really tweak everything we're doing and improve everything we're doing. And so you know, so living on a dime, we're going to start doing more things like the misfits reviews. So comment, guys, and let me know. Do you want me to review stuff? I mean, because I was thinking about reviewing like. 
KitchenAid mixer and Instant Pot and air fryers and stuff like my digital thermometer that I love. But, um, and then things like we did the Misfits review this late last week, late last week, I think. And somebody asked me to do every meal, I think it's called. So I'm going to sign up and do every meal. And here's the thing. I'm not asking companies for these. I'm spending our own money to buy this because sometimes when companies know you're doing a review, they'll send you a nicer one or they'll send you something that's a little bit more whippy. And so that's why with the Misfits Market, I just ordered it on my own. I didn't ask them for any promotional anything because I wanted to make sure I got what the average person gets. And oh my goodness, the hate mail. What is wrong with people? You would think, I do not understand what is wrong with people. The rude, nasty comments. I don't know who these people are that are getting these wonderful boxes of fruit and vegetables, but I'm glad your boxes are arriving wonderfully. But let me tell you, three quarters of the people who commented said they had the same problem that I did with rotted vegetables. I went to use the squash that was six days in our fridge and it was all molded. It was gross. Well, you know what's funny and about it? And it wasn't frozen. What's funny about it is, I think at first, it's not the kind of thing we would probably buy. But at first, we weren't sure. And I was, it looked good at first. I was expecting Tara not to like it. And then it looked pretty good. Yeah. And so then I was like, oh, well, this is different. And then, though, even by that evening, we were noticing it was going bad really fast. Yeah. Uh, and so it was interesting to see the, kind of the progression on that. And unfortunately, I think some companies are mainly trying to reach people that want to feel good about doing something good. And, and I think that their marketing is largely a feel-good thing. Well, the whole saving the environment thing has gotten completely out of control. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. So, <laughs> uh, A number of people saying they would like the, um, the reviews. I need like an instant pot review and I want one, but is it worth it? <laughs> Tara might not be the best person to ask. Or maybe I'm she gonna is. review Actually, it. Actually, she probably would be the best person to ask because our, our experience, we've, oh, so over the last, what, three years in the live show, she's been trying, she tried one, then she got she got upset with it and threw it away, and then she tried another one, and then she gave it away to somebody. No, that she, one was broken. The second one was broken. She tried, like, three different ones, and... I'm sure she could do a review on it, but the lot, the short story is probably that it it's, takes up a lot of space and doesn't really yeah. save time. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the preview. I think it's a waste of money. I have two of them. How I ended up with two of them, I don't know. But I'm only keeping them for the show. But I I don't use them. I, the, I've used them to cook potatoes, and I've had success with potatoes and hard-boiled eggs. But everything else has been a disaster. And to put it <laughs> to put it in 11-year-old terms, Jack's friend was over one day and we were talking about the Instant Pot. And he said, oh, yeah, every time my mom uses the Instant Pot, it's 7.30 <laughs> before we can eat dinner <laughs> because it doesn't get done. Because it's not instant. It's really not instant. And really stupid frankly... The food, yeah, the frankly, the food tastes a whole lot better baked in the oven. But I'll do a review on it. What I noticed on the instant pot is that it never seems to get tender, like when Tara does yeah. the roasts or the roast turkey in the oven. It's in the oven for just for probably the same amount of time as instant pot. A little well, longer. it's longer, longer it's but longer. still. But she doesn't have to wait for the oven to build up pressure and stand here waiting for it and stuff like that. And the roasts and the turkey always turns out super super tender, but in the in the instant pot it really we haven't had that experience well and like with the hard-boiled eggs you have to get them out exactly <clears throat> five minutes after they're done cooking so you have to stand there with the towel over the little vent thing so you're not spewing dirty <laughs> cooking water all over your walls and with a fork so you don't scald yourself 
and hold that open for like five minutes. It's like five to eight minutes before that vent opens and it releases. So sorry, I got started. I'll set it for the review. So <laughs> but, and mom wants to do the KitchenAid mixer. You guys think I'm bad on the Instant Pot? Oh, me. And you don't want to hear mom with the KitchenAid mixer. <laughs> we'll wait till June and do that when she comes back for the boys' birthday, if she does. And I don't know about Tara, but I could say a preview of what the rest of the family thinks. We like the air fryer in a microwave kind of way. Yeah. Which is to say it cooks fast and it makes things kind of yeah. more crispy. Although maybe not as well for it's kind of messy for some things yeah and stuff <laughs> we like using the air fryer but it's really messy and it's a really pain in the patootie to clean <laughs> Lori says i love your reviews because you're honest and it seems like a number of people were yeah and that's the thing yeah uh, shelly sheila i could see with the name but um every plate i'm gonna do that a review on that as a matter of fact i'm gonna order it tonight but um here's the thing I want you guys to get the truth from me. I had someone accuse me of working for the other company. I don't even know who the other company would be for Misfits because I don't even look into that stuff. But anyway, I think it's there is something called Farm Farm Table, Farm Fresh or something that maybe was one. And then there was another one that starts with an I. It was, I can't remember. But anyway, see, I don't even know what they are. But one person said, oh, well, you must be working for that other company. No, I'm not. I want you guys to not waste your money on these things because 40 bucks for $10 worth of fruits and vegetables, you'd better get good non-rotting fruits and vegetables, you know? So anyway. <laughs> the little house upgrade can't use the instant pot on solar panels. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. All right, there you guys go. Fudgy brownies that are regular. These aren't the gluten free, these are the regular. Mm -mm -mm. Well, they have to cool first. No, so the gluten free oh. ones were the appetizer, and these ones are dinner. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Dave's going to set them on my cooling shelf outside so I can get my brownies faster. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so actually, Tracy says, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Maybe you could do taste tests between name brand and generic foods. I'm oh, sure Mike would like that too. She I'm already doing that. Said that. I'm already going to do that. And organic, because everybody says, oh, organic food tastes so much better. It does not. Let me tell you, this food that I got, there was no difference in taste at all. But anyway, I have to tell you guys something funny. So when Dave rescued me out of the snow the other day, because I kind of got stuck and couldn't get going. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to wait out in the snow and see how deep it is. I'm like, that sounds like a Tara idea. <laughs> so I said, oh, thanks, Dave, for rescuing Mom. That was so sweet. And you know what his response was? Well, I knew if I didn't rescue you, I'd never get cheeseburger rolls again. So I wanted to make sure I had my cheeseburger rolls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave, I love you, too. <laughs> uh cooking the old-fashioned way is always the best. Yes, it is, Denise. It really is, and it tastes so much better, and that's why people like our cooking, because, and it doesn't take any longer. It takes the same three minutes that it takes to throw a roast and carrots into an Instant Pot is the same three minutes it takes you to throw it into the oven, and you can put the Instant Pot have it running all day. Well, there's no reason why you can't be running your oven all day. Now, maybe not in the summer, and I could see maybe it would be okay using it for the Instant Pot, using the, it for the summer maybe, but use your oven in the winter. It doesn't take that much electricity, and people who are terrified of fires or whatever, well, you leave your heater on, you leave your crock pot on, you know, if you don't trust your oven, then you need to get a new oven that you know you can trust. That's not, that's a appliance problem. Yeah. Um. Kimberly, I heard multiple times that there's no difference. How are you going to prove to me that it was grown organic because it has a sticker? Really? I'm not going to pay all the money for organic. I reached my good old age with regular vegetables and fruit. I'm going to keep on doing it. Here's the thing. Katara's mom is 92 and her grandfather's 93. My grandma. 
It's not right. my mom. <laughs> yeah, Jill, you're, you're looking pretty good for your age. Tara's grandmother is 92. Yeah. And was Grandpa 93 when he died? Yeah. And and he didn't die of anything except just being old. <laughs> and, of, of the 11 grandparents that I had when I was born, one died from a hospital mistake in her 70s. The other one did get colon cancer, but the other nine were in their 90s to 100s, late 90s, mid to late 90s. 93 to 100 was when they all died. And they had been living on processed food, non-organic food for the majority of 75 of their years. And so you can't tell me that it's any healthier for you. I just, I do not believe it. I have my own social proof. I think it's a bunch of baloney. I think the stress of worrying about whether it's organic or not, as a matter of fact, type in Russian hermit. I want to show you something. Oops, sorry. Uh, I will. Right yes, there. Going to do it right now. I want to show you something. This is what living and eating organic food and having a stressful life does for you. Okay. Oh, she looks no. happy at least. So let's see. This, let's see, scroll down. She keeps scrolling. Oh, sorry. Here, hold on. Let me find the. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So Oops. this picture is what I want. Can you expand it? Just uh, go out. This website is trying to not let you. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, so let me show you. Okay. Wow. All right. It's this like is 30, what? She's 35 years old. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Okay. You see that picture? That lady is. Why isn't it going? She's what? Please don't say like. 40. That lady is 75 years old. Okay. She has lived in Siberia on her own. Now go to our site and then click do we still have about us is mom on there okay right there she is 75 years old living on organic food having a horribly stressful life trying to keep her oh, she's the same self age alive look at my mom who is five years younger than her wow and it's not organic she doesn't eat organic food. She's had a pretty stressful life vegetables. too. Your mom doesn't eat she doesn't even eat vegetables. She's had a pretty stressful life herself. She eats a vegetable every now and then. Probably not as stressful as the other lady. You're not going to tell me that eating organic food, and besides, I had a Stanford professor tell me what chemistry professor tell me that the stress of worrying about it is oh, way worse than um way worse than even eating the minute amount of pesticides you get on the um on the vegetables so anyway that's my rant for the day <clears throat> you can't tell me and it, you you're not going to convince well, me i'm sorry one but. thing i would say for almost all americans worrying is going to kill you first yep for so i think if people make enough effort to um stop worrying as much you're more likely to live longer i would say yeah anyway yes what are you gonna say what are you looking for i've just been staying on patrol oh i see all right, mom has chocolate to keep her young. Yep, there you go. And she's not sugar free and she's not all that other stuff. You got only one rant today. Was there only one rant? Today? Oh, I'm sure I had four or five, but <laughs> they were mini rants. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, I mean, the stress that people are under worrying themselves about this stuff is crazy. You know what you could really do to live longer? <laughs> Turn off the news. I actually turned off my Facebook 10 weeks ago and 
and it's a lot less stressful without it. You know, I, I, I thought I'm going to miss all the people, and I and there were there are a few people I think I wonder how they're doing. Um, but I contacted some of them, and they were like, "Oh, you're gone." <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there you go. So, you want to know what stress I had this morning? I don't think I do. I woke up terrified oh. because I realized it was St. Patrick's Day, and instead of putting on my green fingernails, I put yes. on my pink fingernails. Yes. Now that's stress. So, if you're a natural worrier, well, um. Stop it! Just stop it! The truth is. Worrying is kind of a, it's a learned behavior. And a lot of times it's learned when you're very, very young and yes. you don't know. And I can tell you from personal experience, things that you learned when you don't even remember yeah. can affect you later in life. But I would say if you have, if you struggle with that, you probably should try to figure out ways to reduce that. And well, and make sure you get counseling, counseling to deal with your childhood issues. Make sure you don't have a chemical problem like a B vitamin B B deficiency. We had we knew someone who decided to go vegan and she started going berserk. And we're like, what is wrong with you? Well, come to find out she didn't have any vitamin D. And so make sure that you have enough vitamin uh, D, vitamin Bs. All of those kinds of things. But then the next step is you're a Christian. God, it's a sin for us to worry. God says, specifically says, do not worry. And so put those worries into a prayer and pray about it. And then get your mind on something else. Find something else constructive to do. Go out and garden. Do some embroidery read a good clean book, read the Bible, watch a funny show, go watch funny shows. Well, like our brains get into the same pattern. Watch Carol Burnett, watch Lucille Ball, watch funny comedy movies. That helps get your brain out of that system and it's a constant battle, but you have to keep fighting it. Well, there, it's a, trying to figure out all the reasons why you worry can take a really long time. But one thing that I think most people, most people feed the worry. Yeah. Like if you, if you worry a lot and, and you check the news every day. Every, every 15 minutes of every day. You're pouring gasoline on the fire. Because the thing about the news is almost none of it is really relevant to your life. Yeah. Which is to say there are things, there's, there are bad things in the world. There are scary things in the world. Most of them you can't take any action to change. So why worry about it? If there are things you can take action to change, take the action you can. But, but the thing is, if you're worrying and you watch the news, then that's going to magnify your worrying. If you're worrying and you're on social media and on those social media and you check in all the time and you find yourself getting stressed when you read things on there, then that's contributing to your worry. There are things that are deeper than that for a lot of people. Like if you learn when you're a child, sometimes how you see a circumstance can affect you worrying later in life. But you can reduce it greatly by not feeding it now. Well, and stop doing behaviors that feed that. Like I had a friend one time and she literally had to control everyone. I mean, she tried controlling me to the point where she was making out lists of two and three months in advance of shows I should do because she was so upset because I don't plan my shows more than 24 hours in advance. And she was really upset about it. And she took it upon herself to plan my show, my business. And she took it upon herself to get me organized. That was none of her business, but she was so worried about it. And she had major physical issues. I mean, her body was literally eating itself away. And she was on opiates because of pain and all of these things because she, and to, to her defense, she grew up in a very abusive home growing up, very abusive home. But, 
it was her responsibility to get the counseling she needed to help deal with that abuse from growing up. And when you're abused like that, yes, it creates those patterns in your head, but it's then your responsibility to start healing from that and get the healing that you need. Well, and if something drives you crazy about how somebody else thinks, and you have to tell them, I don't agree with how you think, but I like you. <clears throat> or if you say, it's driving me crazy that your blinds are off because I'm just a little OCD. Yeah. Or something else like that. That's a clue that something, there's something that's in your, in yourself that's causing you a great amount of stress. And because it's not really reasonable to kind of expect other people to accommodate those kinds of anxieties. Yeah. So when we had a show and over <clears> here <throat> at our kitchen table and we had the blinds down because of the light, one of the blind things was off. And we literally had people flipping out on our live stream because we refused to fix that blind. And I'm sorry, but your OCD is not my problem. It's not. That's your problem and you need to deal with it and you need to work on what needs to be done. And you putting your OCD on me is not okay. Well, and it's interesting because a lot of people, so we're saying this because if you have this situation, we would like you to, to feel better. Yeah. And um, what I, I grew up with a lot of anxieties and thankfully have backed away from a lot of them. Some of them I still have some struggles with, but I think about people when they have anxieties about things and the culture now is kind of in the mindset that if you have anxiety, everyone needs to come around you and, and make your anxiety feel better for you. But that's really not good because that's going to push you closer to the brink of just completely collapsing. Yeah. So like, for instance, I used to be terrified of bees and wasps and things. And when we were dating, I, we went to a, we went to a botanical, botanical garden gardens. and guess what? It's totally covered in bees. Yeah. And I, I was completely coming unraveled about it. And Tara didn't, she, I was a little upset because she didn't see how urgent of a problem this was. And I realized that kind of thing, um, if, if you let your anxiety dictate how other people are supposed to behave around you, then it's going to destroy yeah. you. And so anxieties are all learned really there. And they're all things that if you can figure out like, oh, wait, I just felt stressed. Like, whoa, what thought in my mind triggered that stress? Yeah. And a counselor would help you walk it backwards from yeah. there. Rob from Little House Off Grid says you should chop wood and uh, raise chickens. <laughs> no, I've been watching. I have watched your whole chicken series. I didn't get today's. I I was late today. I had to film a video today, but I'll watch it after the show. I've watched your entire chicken video. Problem is, I can't convince Mike to get chickens. I only like <laughs> chickens when they come in pre-cooked packages. <laughs> But I'll take them in unprecooked packages that we can cook. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Rob. I do have a great appreciation for the cutting wood. When we lived he in Idaho, wood. and we were all on wood for the wood stove. I just absolutely loved it. It was a great way to say, "I'm just going to go outside and cut wood for an hour." And it kind of really, it was like it's like going to the gym. Yep. It just kind of relaxes you in yep. that sort of way. Yeah, guys, go check out Rob. I love his videos. He has the funniest titles and thumbnails. They're hilarious. So I watch you just for your titles and thumbnails. And every day the kids are like, okay, what do you do now? <laughs> hey, well, one thing back on the anxiety thing. Um, because this is a major thing for me. And I really would like to see everyone, including myself, never have any trouble with it again. <laughs> but I would say another thing that people don't see as anxiety that will destroy them is... If, if you find that nobody else is doing things in the right way yeah, and that when other people in your family or your friends group have a problem and they don't know it's a problem like you do, 
and you really have to aggressively push to solve that problem. Or if you're the only person in your family who always helps everybody with everything, those are signs that you probably have a major anxiety problem as well. Yeah. And I, I'm only saying that for because my goal on anxiety is that everyone would have it all go away. And if, if you don't recognize that the anxiety is within your control, it'll destroy you and you won't be able to. You can't control it unless you recognize it's a problem. And I say that because uh, back in the days when, when I met Tara, I had never been to counseling. I was only a Christian for a very short amount of time. I had a lot of ideas that weren't right. And if I had continued going down that path, like well, other people he, that were close to me growing up. But he grew up in a very abusive alcoholic home. But so it doesn't have to be that way no. for you to generate anxiety. But just so, just so you know, it wasn't just like you just woke up one day and decided to be anxious. You were taught that every single day of your life to be terrified yes. and afraid. Yes, I was. So. And even if you grew up in a family that was, you know, pretty straight up most of the time, there are just things that happen in life that are unpredictable. And some kids internalize that in a way that creates anxiety for a long period of time until you figure out, wait, I'm I'm creating my own anxiety and I didn't realize it. And you figure out how to step back from that. It's mm -hmm. a difficult process, but you can do it. And I strongly, yeah. strongly recommend that you do. Like for me, I, how how much do you think it's come down since? Your anxiety? I know, I know there's still more than I would like, but uh, it's come down greatly. Well. Okay, I would say when we were married, I would say when we were first married, he was a 10. And I would say you're probably like, most days now, you're probably a two or a three. Oh, I thought you were going to say an eight. <laughs> but <laughs> on bad that. days, when you're having a bad day, it could be a seven or an eight. But very, it very... used to be every single day, yes. and now it's occasionally. It's honest reviews. <laughs> you're from Tara. Just kidding. Yeah. Um, People asking occasionally what's up with the focus or about um, buffering and stuff. It's possible because of all the snow on the ground or something that our internet is having oh, an yeah. issue. It might be slower than usual, or it's possible it's something on your end as well. So hopefully if, if the next show is good, then. Our internet is underground, so the snow could possibly affect it. And sometimes people will slide off the road and take out the poles or partially take out the poles. <laughs> And so, oh my, Denise, I want to see part one of that story. Uh, she says, well, let me see what the first part is. <laughs> uh, Denise, okay, let me just go back. She says, my mom grew up with chickens and became friends with them. She couldn't eat them and made my grandma buy chicken dinner at the store. <laughs> then she says, she also wanted to bring the cows inside during the winter in Kansas because they were too cold outside. <laughs> wow. Although it sounds like that's when she was maybe a kid, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it does frustrate me on that anxiety thing because I have done a lot to back away from it. But sometimes it's, it's yeah. a little more difficult. See, than you just is. need to go live off grid like Rob. I'm telling you, Rob, here's the thing. <laughs> I watch your video every day. And let me tell you, every day I'm like, okay. Maybe we should just build ourselves like three tiny houses, put us in one, the boys in the other, and use the third for an office, and just wait it out until houses go down. Because if we spent fifteen thousand dollars on a tiny house, that would be. The problem is land is two hundred thousand dollars around here, and I love Europe, but I don't want to go to Missouri. It is horridly hot and humid, wouldn't be able to do it, no. Unfortunately, it's the heat and humidity. No. <laughs> uh, Rob's channel is Tiny House Off Grid, right? Little House Off Little Grid. Little House Off Grid, yeah. sorry, sorry Rob. Little House Off Grid. I know, I always get it mixed up. Okay, there's the cheeseburger roll, guys, right there, right there. Yeah, go subscribe to Rob, send him some love, tell him living on a dime, Cynthia. <laughs> He's funny, he has the funniest titles. Holy I get, cow, I get first are you guys? I get first dibs. What do you mean? I was the one who suggested it. No, I was. He says there's no heat right now. <laughs> oh, no. What happened to your... Oh, oh, because it's winter. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Well, see, here's what we could do. We could live in Colorado for, no, we can't live here in June, July, and August because that's when all the dogs are out. So that's the problem. <laughs> so, okay. I wasn't, oh, that someone's going to say. Uh, the boys don't even let this cool before we dig in. That's how good they are. Yes, BJ told me the other day. So our son is working in an RV place, and he said that he said there's a like a teenager, I think it's a teenager, trying to buy an RV because his parents bought a big property up in the mountains, and his sister has an RV on the property somewhere away from the parents, and he wants to have his RV on the same property. Hey, I'll do that. Like, that was our idea when our kids were just a little bit younger. I and, that. <laughs> Walter Skelter says those kids are quick. Yes. Oh, they love cheeseburger rolls. I heard cheeseburger rolls, rolls and I'm like, this ah, the only one? I was going to let it cool. So I <laughs> should have made double. I didn't. You know. <clears throat> well, we can work on a second batch. Yeah, you could make a second batch. This one will only I mean, hold us for like two hours, just so you know. Less than that, like 15 minutes, I think. Well, just one or two. I'll take a second. I'll take a second one. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. There you go. It's already half gone. It's, yes, it's already half gone. 30 seconds out of the oven. Okay. Where are we at? Dave's informing us of the time. So we're at the, the health is revolting. Huh? Yes, Lindsay. Um, I'm sorry that happened to you, but uh, definitely the... Those kinds of anxieties are really hard to overcome, but it's important that you do. It's important that you get the help that you need to overcome it. And you may not totally ever, ever overcome it all in your life, and that's okay. But, but Revelation 21, 4, <laughs> there will be no more tears or crying or pain. These things are gone forever. Woo! There you go. Mike's first of the day. <laughs> All right, so good. Oh, that's why when I'm having the worst kind of meltdown, which thankfully hardly it doesn't happen nearly as much as it used to, but when I'm in those moments, I just think that I I love that final conclusion there. Yes, was it delicious, Jack? <laughs> yeah. We need social proof that it's delicious. Here, it's delicious. <laughs> yes. Slather the butter on that hot hamburger roll. You want my opinion? Sure. I mean, it's definitely not the best thing I've eaten. Oh, good grief. I listen to you. It doesn't taste very good. <laughs> yeah, but it's going away. But you're just eating it as fast as you can snarf it. What's so. funny, Jack's kind of a prankster gangster, but <clears throat> he uh, also... At times, it is, good. it is funny though. Sometimes Tara will make These the food really good. the Whoa. same way that she always Whoa. makes it, and he'll he'll kind of do that, but he's being a little more serious, right? <laughs> Dude, just eat it. <laughs> it's the same thing you eat every time. Oh, Denise oh, wants to see the, inside, show the of inside of it. We never do take a picture of the inside. Do we? we should have. I should have you take a picture of the inside, Dave. Uh, Turn it the other way; she can see the hamburger better. Oh, that the bun there. Yep. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There's the inside. Oh, yum. Looking good. Yeah. So, Michelle, I would add more stuff like mushrooms and bell peppers. Yes, if yeah. you're making it, we only make it this simple just because it's for the kids, right? Yeah. We so, you can use amazing. ham and cheese. You can spread it with pizza sauce and do pepperoni and mozzarella cheese. You could do um, pesto sauce with basil and um, mozzarella cheese. You could do chicken with barbecue sauce. You can do any combination, like if whatever pizza you like, oh. you could fill it with whatever pizza fillings you want, you know, 10 meat pizza, whatever, bacon, Canadian bacon and uh, pineapple or uh, that type, you know, mozzarella, that type of thing. So, uh, one thing on the, thank you for everyone who's saying thank you for the Bible study. I appreciate that. We are trying to make some equipment improvements here to make our regular shows easier. And I'm hoping that will make that easier as well because uh, kind of what I, the way I've been doing it's been taking way yeah. too long. And okay, show Dave, <clears throat> show the ceiling. Oh, oh all right. Oh. We've got cool stuff getting ready to come up, guys. Oh, cool stuff. Yeah. 
So how many of you have something like this on your <laughs> ceiling in your kitchen? <laughs> Actually, it's currently in its up configuration, but it'll hang down quite a bit lower if we want it to. And uh, it, we're trying to put an overhead camera yeah. for the cooking so that instead of having this camera have to kind of jump in, it actually has a really great shot of the food. I tell, So we're doing this 12-week how to improve your YouTube channel course starting in April. And I told Mike, Okay, we just got the camera on the ceiling after waiting years to do it because we were moving. And I said, now what's going to happen is we got the camera finally on the ceiling. We're going to start the uh, YouTube course, and you know what's going to happen. We're going to find a house, and we're going to end up moving in the middle of all this. We'll be driving and watching it live while we're on the road somewhere. Uh, oh, uh, somebody said something about... Uh, news person making world news sound scary by the tone of his voice. I have to tell you, if you have anxiety trouble, and even if you don't, you will. If you, if you, um, when I was, I worked in television for 20 years, and in television, well, I did not do news, but I was around a lot of people that did news, and they are encouraged to bring out the scary in the news because scary sells things better that people respond better to fear than to happiness. That's why if you've ever seen, sometimes a news channel will get this idea of, oh, we're gonna do the happy news and it lasts about two weeks and then it's gone. And the reason why it's gone is because they have trouble motivating people to go to their advertisers with happy news. But when people are terrified and they watch the show, then, they, then the advertisers get visits. So keep that in mind, especially if you have anxiety, there are, news is there to make you worry about things. Mm -hmm. They're not your friend. Yeah. 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 So guys are saving up the green cell right now, 35% off all of our cookbooks, including our gluten-free, dairy-free dining on a dime one and two, 35% off and 70 to 90% off all of our eBooks Our saving up the green cell is going on till next week. Guys, this is one of our biggest sales of the year. This, Mother's Saving of the Green, Mother's Day, and Thanksgiving are our biggest sales of the year. So be sure to pick that up. Ellie, goat milk gifts. She's refilled right there. Goat milk gifts with goat milk cream and soap. She is refilled, restocked. I will make the acne soap tomorrow. So pre order that and it will ship out in a week if you want the acne soap. Um, and goatmilkgifts.com, use coupon code SAVE17 for that. Yes. Any other last questions or comments before we go? This is very good. You just have to make money there, guys. Very good. The coupon code is SAVE17. Yep. Let me switch over here and see. Sometimes some the questions come up faster over here. Ah, it looks like what that's is? good food. Oh, the cheap Zero roll is delicious. Good food. <laughs> very good food. Yay. Well, you can tell it's delicious because if we don't hurry up and stop the show, Mark's not going to get a piece. <laughs> Which maybe wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but uh, Mike loves it. But food doesn't yeah. like Mike so much. Okay. Uh, what is all on that hamburger roll? That one's just cheese and hamburger and seasoned salt. So that's what the boys like, so that's what we do. Well, thanks, everyone. Yep. Uh, oh, have a great night. So, Marla, on the books, the books do not have a coupon. coupon. No, the books, the books are just marked down. And you can see on the on our website with the books, there are, there's a markdown and there's a what they were before price. So you can see that markdown is what it actually yeah. costs. Yeah. yeah. So print books are 35% off, including our price book and our financial planners. Those are 50% off, and we are not reprinting those two. So if you want a price book or a financial planner, um, well, I don't have a price book, but here's the financial planner. We are not reprinting those. We're just going to go digital with those. Um, everything in the store is on sale. And our ebook collection that's normally $300 is only $29. Ooh. So that's 90% off. So grab that if you guys want. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. We hope yeah. you have a great night. We'll see you next time. Living on a Bye. 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 Bye.